Hello and welcome everyone to this week's episode of Dragon Fable. Now, normally I would play the latest release on my level 58 Jaina character. However, because I still haven't beaten the Mielos interlude, or the Notha interlude on that character, let's just go ahead and play it as my main character, Irene. So, this is the epilogue that we will see this week. It is actually quite a fascinating tale, and a very good ending, I do believe. Let's go to Remembrance. Fish stews ready, everyone! I don't know. This doesn't feel right. Is there something wrong with your stew? I can't say I've had anything quite like it before. What do you think, Mielas? I do not have the required mechanical processes to ingest food. But I'm sure it's delicious. Ah, right. We'll have to figure, out, figure something out for that. With your permission, of course. Of course. Oh, uh, the stew is fine. Delicious, even. Was it really okay to have Antanas just... If one time. Lock and key will make sure whatever remains of Cthulhu's influence does not escape. You say that, but I find it hard to believe they are infallible. The makers are inside them too, after all. And if the madness that took Antares were to spread, it seems risky. The remains are dormant and secure. Risk is minimal. Besides, it's only temporary. They just have to hold everything until we get back to La Chique. And uh, I'm not one for nostalgia, but it really has been quite a while. Once I get a lab set up, maybe excavate a few artifacts. We'll make a separate secure unit for Hamtalas. Hmm. Equilibria. Whispers, Cthulhu. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. What, what happened to them, Thalos? I can't say I know anything about this Cthulhu entity, but as for them, Thalos himself, the way I understand it, them, Thalos and his people were tossed by the Aftars with, hmm, keeping watch over something or other. Well, whatever it was, it broke free and the Abyssal Elves were enslaved. Amthalas managed to escape, but never forgave the Aftars for abandoning them to their fate. Something that broke free and enslaved them. I think it's fair to say that was Cthulhu. Oh, right. That makes sense. I... I see. What we thought then, that was this Cthulhu? No, I don't think so, not entirely. It was different from the Cthulhu I encountered before, similar but different. I think Ramthalos maybe never truly escaped Cthulhu. So, so, 
Cthulhu's influence on Gonzalez's desire for revenge against the Astars in Equilibria must have coalesced in his dreams. So he wasn't just angry about the Astars, but in Equilibria too? Ah, that might have been my fault. Or at least he learned of the Equilibria from me, I think. It sounded like Cthulhu had some knowledge of equilibria and whispers beyond your understanding, Natha. Curious, that. Whatever the case, I imagine the madness must have latched onto Gantalas' obsession and amplified it somewhat. Cthulhu probably wasn't happy about the Aftars trying to contain it either. What do you think, Milas? You've been pretty quiet. I, I do not recognize any of these designations. I am sorry, I cannot be of any more help. It's okay, Mielos. We're just trying to make sense of everything. I do have a curiosity, though. Namthalas mentions things repeating or staying the same. Just how old is Cthulhu? When I first met it, it mentioned that we had met before. A lot of cryptic weirdness, just like this time. You don't suppose we get reincarnated or reborn after we die, do you? Oh, uh -huh. such blasphemy from the Holy Warrior! I'm only asking the question as a hypothetical. That's how it starts, you know. Right, too far, sorry. As for reincarnation, hmm. Even among the exalted, there was no mention of people being reborn or souls returning from death, as it were. At least from my own studies. And it was it's certainly never a theory followed by a sheikh in my time. After all, I was directed to the throne to look into longevity. From my understanding, when people die, their mana typically returns over time to the mana core. What happens after that, I cannot say. There are exceptions, of course, but none that I have studied particularly in depth. With how old Cthulhu seems to be, maybe it has some trouble understanding Hello. what happens when it makes. Hello! What? Maybe it has some trouble understanding what happens when it wakes. I know it recognized me or thought it did. Who knows? Maybe it is as ancient as I am or older. And perhaps it memory, its memories are just as frayed. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't right to keep the makers as they are. If this is the sort of threat that they were protecting us from. Ah, but we were able to protect ourselves. We can't protect everyone. And neither could the avatars. I'm not, I can't say I'm not interested in Cthulhu, but from what we saw happen to Ramthalas, some things are better left alone, for now at least. Oh, that reminds me, Miros. Yes, Jaina. How did Notha convince you to fight against the Avatars? Notha offered me that which I wanted the most. Life. A new form. I was very convincing. That was all? That seems like a rather lopsided transaction. If I survived, I did not know what would happen to me. Perhaps I would have been free. There is a very distinct possibility that the Avatars would have imprisoned me. Or attempted to coerce me into their service. You freed Mielos from the, uh, what 
was it again? A corrupting seed. Shadow Scythe. The Shadow Scythe. That's one of the things the Avatars were afraid of. And I think... Saboteur had ties to it? Ah, I recall the Makers bringing it up when we first met them. Saboteur was that villain you fought before, wasn't he? And as I learned from Mielos, it turns out that the Shadow Scythe are older than even the Exalted. The Makers feared themselves becoming influenced by something, but that seemed distinct from the Shadow Scythe. They feared the influence of the Whispers, though I imagine they've been conflicted for a long while now. It sounds like you've dealt with the Shadow Scythe before, Firemage. Do you have any insight into this? Hmm. Sepulchre and the mysterious stranger were a lot more actively evil than even some of the Malaris. Destructive forces of doom. Doom. Perhaps the Shadow Scythe is a splinter of the Whispers? No, that doesn't make sense if it came before. But working with incomplete information, how exciting! This begs further research. Right, right, Miel uh, so Mielos, we freed you from the influence of doom. Why turn against the Makers? I was free, but I held no gratitude for the Avatars. You are time, Jainer. You freed me despite the Avatars' orders. They would have been just as content to see me destroyed or subjugated by themselves. I would never be free to exist while they remained. You... you don't know that. Given their previous behavior patterns, it was a logical inference. Despite Notha's eagerness and her own obsessions, I never felt used or coerced as I feared from Remthalos. You see, nothing underhanded or sneaky. I didn't force Milos to do anything they didn't want to. That's reassuring. I suppose I can try to understand. What about the other dragon egg? What's up, Reef? Still disagreeing with you? They are curious about the egg of the savior. It was returned to the Aftars after the heroes defeated Loina. Do you know what happened to it after? I hate to think of it lost in the Deadlands. This egg is important, is it? The egg contains the counterpart to Reeve, the savior, the creator. Hmm. Nothing I've ever heard of. Sounds like celestial or equilibrium nonsense to me. Do you know what happened to it, Lock and Key? We do not. Wherever the Aftars may have placed it before their slumber, we do not know. I'm sure it will turn up eventually. Important things tend to, after all. They certainly do. Enough. Enough! That's enough happy talk for one night. We should be celebrating our victory. There'll be more time to talk later before we head back to... Back to Machine. We've had quite the adventure, haven't we? Doesn't have to end here. I suppose the grandkids can take care of themselves a little longer. There's still so much to see. I would like to explore more of this land as well. Well, you're all welcome to stay as long as you wish. 
and I'm sure your adventures will one day lead you to the Sheik as well. You'll be welcome as a hero, of course. As one journey ends, another begins. Such is the hero's story. So solemn. We need to lighten up a bit. Hey, Spruce, can you get us a round of Boglenberry juice or two? The good stuff. The better stuff, I just want more. Sure thing! Note to self, procure a keg or two for transport back to the shade. I'm sure there's plenty of room in lock and key. Later, that evening. It's over. It's finally over, Serenity. From the cultist to Feltrith, Caitiff to Malorus. But it's never over, is it? I know there will be more threats to lore, more mysteries to uncover, more friends and foes, more struggles and loss, more victories and Moments of peace. I'm lucky enough to be free to make my own choices, follow my own path, and I have the power and friends to see me safely through the dangers along the way. But sometimes I can't save everyone. Is that fate or destiny decreeing when someone's life must end? Is it doom? Overwhelming and destroying, taking whatever it can. Doing some difficult thinking, if I may say no. Hey Nata, well, recent events have given me a lot to think about. Good and evil, destiny and doom. All these higher concepts and influences. Even beyond those, such as Cthul. Who knows how many things are watching us and playing with us. So, what do we do? There's enough trouble and lore as it is without heroes searching beyond for beings that may one day look at us the wrong way. We balance ourselves, Zena. And if anything, such as the Makers, wish to impose their will on us, then we fight back. And we win, just as we already have. As for searching beyond, I'm certainly not uh, satisfied with the answers I've gotten so far. Maybe one day, when you get bored of being the hero of lore, you'll find me. Or I'll find you. Or maybe you'll poke something you shouldn't have, and I won't have much of a choice. You always have a choice, Jaina. Nothing is impossible. Are we friends? What? Never mind. I was just surprised. That seemed... That's quite the tone, see you. Oh, sorry. I think... After everything we've been through, hmm. what do you think, Nata? Are we friends? I... I don't know. I'd like to be. Well, that's a good start. I'm sure you meet plenty of other people in your adventures too. With the afters gone, whatever happens, whatever you decide to do, however you interact with others, it's all your own actions and words. I did put a lot of blame on the makers, the Aftars, but even then, my actions are and were always truly my own. Thank you for that reminder, Jaina. I am free after all, free to make mistakes, to learn and grow. You know, I bet there are a lot of people in La Sheik who feel the way you did, who feel like they've done everything right according to the makers. 
but still find themselves suffering. I was lucky, but yes, and there are certainly those who could do with some freedom. Oh, but I did promise Yonta I wouldn't start a revolution. You've had so much time to process that anger and betrayal. Those you help might need more productive ways to channel that anger, besides la uh, violence or lashing out. Mm. You're still thinking about starting a revolution, aren't you? Maybe. If I just accidentally let words slip and someone else spreads it, it's not really me starting things, is it? I'm not actually telling people to take up arms. Ah, but a clandestine group of researchers and adventurers sounds exciting too. I'll just have to see which path feels more interesting. Or maybe I'll follow both. What about you, Anta? I do want to be her friend too, I suppose. Ah, so many decisions. How exciting! Speaking of which, right now I'm going to decide to go in and get another mug of Muglin Berries juice, for example. Such freedom is absolutely incredible. Alright, I'll see you later, Nata. Or maybe I could get cocoa butter juice or mix them together. Surely someone's tried that before. So many discoveries to be made, so many mysteries to solve, questions to answer, adventures to be had. I better head back home before Reed gets up to any mischief. They seem happy with their results. As they should be, they were victorious. Would they be upset if we were to leave? They would. Emotional attachment can be conductive to observational endeavors. Then the observation shall continue. We still have much to learn. We still have much to share. The end. As one journey ends, another begins. Such is the hero's journey. So, this was uh, awesome. And yeah, this is uh, this is the ending of the Mellor saga, and the ending of everything that started with the regular Friday the Thirteenth invasions. Now, you can get the Void Cutter versions of the Abyssal Cutter uh, weapons, which. Uh, yeah, these look very pretty and I actually really like them. I don't think they are as uh, awesome as some others, but they have the highest intelligence plus out of anything that isn't. And they have the highest main stat plus out of any weapon that isn't the uh, antithesis weapons. So... As I sa uh, said in the Falcon Reach chat, I think that doing uh, that doing the what the fuck uh, doing the dead uh, uh, doing Death Knight for uh, 
for Ash at least should be very, very doable. So to our house we go and let's equip everything that night. Starting with the class itself, of course. Uh, which one was it? No. This one it was. And then since it is human, we can actually use the vial infused rose spear. Also, something that you might have noticed, but there is more backspace. As a base class, as a base account, you get 10 more backspace now. And as a dragon uh, amulet holder, you get an additional 20 on top of the 10 more that uh, getting the uh, uh, that the base uh, gives you for a total of 230 now instead of the 200 and uh, instead of the 200 that you had as your previous max. On top of all that, we now have a new layout where you can train it. You can interact with your dragon now. You can pet it. It doesn't want that right now. Take a well and nap. And so, read this content. Other things that you can do now, you can sell directly to your dragon, which means that you don't need to leave anything anymore in order to get it all. Now then, last time I didn't have enough healing or anything in order to make it back to uh, full health after a while. So let's get started and uh, equip the correct trinket, shall we? Uh, it is the amalgam that we require because minus uh, because health resistance is something that we really should watch out for we also now have a base 80 light and darkness resist and 81 mobility resist which of course gets changed a bit around during the uh, fight but we gotta start somewhere. Let's attempt this. Oh, I forgot. Uh, summon pet dragon. Okay. So, this will be our fight with Ash Dragonblade. Let's just start with a full Death Knight rotation. Because in this fight we can actually afford to do that. Let me just open up the endgame wiki for both the class rotation as well as the challenges. Ash Dragonblade. I love the music here as well, like, it's so awesome. All right. It is his first rotation is easy to deal with. So the full Death Knight rotation. Rip. Time to save the world. Oops. Uh, that one can be saved for a bit. Keep 
get to gather ash. And then inspire weakness. Uh, outrage, I guess. Fuck the rock, attack! And then it is soul slash and curse strike and dread blade, so. Boost. This cursed strike will probably. Oh, I can I can do this. I'm I'm an arch knight. And then the full heal. And very quickly taking care of all that. Come on, help me out, princess! Okay, now then, to get our car up, that was attack 9, is that? I'm sorry I forgot your birthday, please! Who will be his next attack? Uh, let's just... Heal. A lot. A lot, a lot. Because now he deals 990% damage. I'm sorry I forgot your birthday. Please! He's so cute. Um, uh, let's just... I can go do the... Lesser... Uh, rotation. So that is attack 10, will give a boost and a, uh, a boost and a shield. So let's stun him. All oh, right, because he will fully heal himself after this. We don't actually need to go ahead and do a full rotation. Uh, yeah, he will boost himself and apply a shield. And we need... A shield for... Not this attack, but the one after. That's more like it. Okay, Fiend. Time to face the true power of an arch knight. So, then there is... Attack 11, which will destroy our boost and our uh, chance to hit. But luckily, we uh, can just shield through the next attack. Uh, okay, the DOT is in. That's good. Then we have two turns left on the heel. Um, That is the heal is here, right? Because I am currently affected by Shadowbreaker. Yes, that means the heal is next turn, which you know is this turn. I mean, all right, let's do this, princess. Which means that I can shield. And then, um, let's see, 
it is yeah he will then uh, repeat his phase three rotation while we start damaging for real finally uh Let's see, the shield is still up. Might as well try to get a hit in, but don't really expect much. Okay. So that is that. below 25%. So now we can stun and uh, start actually dealing a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, let's start with doing that. Okay, then, yeah, one more turn on the stun left, which means that I should get some bonus and everything ready. Because next turn will be a shield. Ultimate attack? How? So this is turn attack 14, which means that next next turn will really be a shield. Uh, let's see. This is... Our final attack. 10 doesn't actually... Yeah, okay, that does, in fact, hit us. Uh, that's just... No, an arch and I never gives up, just like my hero. That is us, by the way. Um... Uh, let's see. Next up is the DOT, I believe. No. Yeah, next up is the DOT. Which is ridiculously strong, in fact, actually. Uh, don't use this one, really. Uh, Let's just start healing again. Weaken, little dragon blade. was right it was 
7, then 11, 15, 12, 13. Then, uh, let's just add the DOT. I didn't want to miss this, but it is understandable, at least, that I missed this. And that was expected. Um, 15 is a stun. Luckily, the stun doesn't actually hurt that much. Uh, am I wearing everything in Death Knight though? I am, so... Uh, oh right, the minus 30 light is why it's so low. I always forgot that. Uh, Next up, so 15, then 12, and then 13. Uh. So now, he is just a bit weakened to uh, uh, to healing just a tiny amount uh, yeah let's just drink a potion and heal a bit further ready princess we are Almost. Stupid. Uh, right, we're just taking this then, I guess. Apparently we are. Uh, Alright then. Ten, eight. Uh, right, we can't afford to get the DOT. So. Reap. An arch knight never gives up, just like my hero. Shield. Um. I have one shield left. Uh, no, no, I uh, can't afford to waste it right now, so. Uh, no shield left, but dragon shield will be up next turn this turn i mean let's just go full on offensive specifically to do this uh And then stun. Lash. Uh, 
And so, we have beaten up a small child. Uh, I hope I'm proud of myself. Uh, I'm very proud of myself because I have not looked up any guides or anything. So the fact that I managed to do this is something that I'm proud of, very proud of. Uh, so yeah, Ash, let's just go back to Tren. Now then, another thing that we can do is, you know, upgrade this if we manage to defeat the beginnings. Uh, sorry. Well, we could, in theory, also just defeat him twice and then and get the slug rot ring upgraded. I don't think that's the best idea though. Um, uh, I will stop for a bit because to be honest, actually, I think this is a good cutting off point because I am kind of done for the day. I have done everything I wanted on top of the fact that I also have several other things I need to do. And I need really, really need to use the bathroom. So I will see you all next week when we try to take on Dracoth and then got to start somewhere. See you all then.